Hello everybody, this is a short video in response to a request from a viewer who asked me to do a response video for which I am happy to oblige. The original video in question is by Mohammed Hijab where he asks whether Adam's height of 60 cubits makes any sense. Today inshallah we're going to be dealing with a hadith uh, which references uh, Adam alayhi salam, a prophet of Islam as being 60 cubits tall, which is like 27 meters. And they say this is unbelievable and impossible. He then explains that the divine creation of Adam is the only area of contention in evolution which Muslims should not accept. Therefore, he ignores the evidence for human and chimpanzee common ancestry. There is something special about the human being and that is why Allah created human being directly. And uh, in this hadith, there's indication that he created Adam in uh, 60 cubits tall. Now, the question is, this seems unscientific on many grounds. Here is a representation of how tall Adam would be compared to an actual human at two meters, who is already way taller than the average. He describes how in some hadiths, Adam's height of 27 meters only applies to him being in heaven. This is, of course, untestable, so I won't look into that. Let's just assume that he was 60 cubits in heaven and on the earth. So when he came down, he was also 27, 27 meters. Let's say he was uh, 27 meters on the earth. What's the problem? The problem are three different things now. Number one, biology. If we use the human anatomy that we have today as the reference point, how could it be that something that tall, or human being that tall, the bone structure can maintain that kind of size, right? Because it will collapse because of the weight of the human being. He goes into some possible objections to the idea that Adam could be 27 meters tall. The first is based on physiology, which is, could a human physically be that tall? The tallest person in recorded history is Robert Wadlow at eight foot 11 inches. He was suffering from health problems and had little feeling in his legs. The problem with increasing height is that there is a much greater increase in surface area and volume and weight with increasing height such that the very high weight becomes a limiting factor. Based on our best understanding of the human body, the maximum possible height a human could be is about 15 feet. This is only one sixth of the height of Adam. Bizarrely, he asks why we are using modern day humans as the reference point when making these calculations. Why would you start with today's human being as a reference point? The reference point is that 27 uh, meter human being that we're talking about. That's the reference point. We use modern humans as the reference point because we know they exist. We can measure them, we can test them, and we can make predictions based on that. How can we use a mythical 27 meter tall man as a reference point? Can you provide one so that he can be experimented upon? We talked about the biological problems, fossilization. How comes there is no fossil record of such a huge human? We can agree that fossilization is rare for a species and for a single individual to find fossil evidence would be virtually impossible. The third now interrogation is, well, how can we conceive of such a disparity between uh, humans Within the, or any kind of animal within the same species like this. They say, we don't accept that. We don't accept that you can have a 27 meter human being, and then you can have a six foot human being, and that, that disparity existed. And they say humans have been around for 350,000 years. Are you saying to me, is my response, that you have, uh, there's no species within the species that exhibit this decrease in size? Because I can give you an example of the dwarf elephants, which the General Proceedings National Academy of Science shows the dwarf ele elephants were 220 pounds. They, they, they went down in 800,000 years. In 800,000 years, they went down 100 times in size. So they were, they were 100 times bigger than they were. They became dwarf elephants. He is giving the example of the dwarf elephant. The reduction in size was not as extreme as he said. The largest of the species was over four meters tall and some shrunk to just one meter tall so this is only a quarter of the height. A quarter of Adam's height would still be nearly seven meters which is way taller than modern humans. Also the reduction in the height of the dwarf elephant occurred because of insular dwarfism. 
This is when large animals evolve into a reduced body size when the population range is limited to a small environment. Can he explain if there was such an environmental condition at the time of Adam? In summary, in response to the question, does Adam's height of 60 cubits or 27 meters make sense? The answer is a clear no. To believe in Adam or his height would involve suspending belief in many branches of science and believing in fairy tales. If you are a theist, however, then you would already believe in those fairy tales anyway, so it's your choice. You make a mockery of the hadith, but the hadith makes a mockery out of you. Uh, no, but thank you for trying to explain it.